as long as there's an offense, you can't enter your palace. As long as there's an offense, you can't step into your shiny. That's why God takes time to approach the soul. Once the soul has been dealt with all those offenses, bitterness, strife, envy, jealousy, loss, all those works of the flesh, the, once that area is purified, the light is in your soul, He will not lift you and give you a platform of expression. Nobody is trying to help him. Nobody is there. Then you don't have anybody. You don't need anybody to be, to be helped. You need yourself and the Holy Spirit. You need your submission to the Holy Spirit. Once he has achieved his purpose in you, elevation is inevitable. It's God that elevates. But you are the one that qualifies for elevation. It's you. It's me. You see a preacher who is going around the world preaching the gospel. Don't envy him. Uh, it's because he has watered the gospel. It's not true. He watered the gospel and fly. He has gone through his seasons. He has paid the price. See, grace does not take away the price in the purification of the soul. Grace empowers you to pay the price. Grace saved you and gave you the Spirit of God free. But the Spirit of God, that it is your submission. Grace will enable you. Are you hearing me? Grace will help you to submit to the Spirit so that His ministry in your soul will be achieved, which is the purging. If a man has not been purged, he will not be very useful to God. There are dimensions God will not use. When a man has been yielded to the purgings of God, he will be ready for who? The Master's use. So we are vessels of dominion and authority and glory. Glory be to God. Because this world is corrupt. God wants to raise men who can rule on the earth. He wants to raise stars that will shine. Now look at Isaiah 11 verse 2. Let's build these thoughts together. Stop there. I told you. When you said the spirit of the Lord is a first dimension, the first dimension, which is the spirit of the redemption of man and the purging of the soul. Because the spirit of God is the spirit of his love. It's what? Love. So if, if, if you open the spirit of God in you, his, his makeup is love. For God is love. That's your chapter 4, verse 8. God is love. So the spirit you receive is love. It's God's love. Now, but that spirit now has a work to do in your soul. That is called the fruit of the spirit. That is the purging, purification, and the cleansing of the works of the flesh. So that the fruit of the spirit can be expressed in your soul. And the fruit of the spirit is expressed by loving one another. That is what happens in the soul realm. Am I communicating? But I've told you that you are three dimensional. The spirit of God in you, your soul, and your body. Now, your authority and dominion is in the body dimension. That is the physical the area of the operations of the spirit. So he says, the spirit of God is up, shall rest on you. That spirit of salvation that will convert your soul. The next thing he wants to say is what will now happen in your bodily ministry, in your physical life. What happens in your spirit? Love of God. What happens in your soul? The fruit of the spirit. Joy, peace, goodness, kindness, all those patience. It's what happens in your soul. That's what purifies your soul. It takes away this offense, bitterness, strife, envy, and jealousy. Are you with me? But in your third dimension, which is your physical world, what you call the realms of visibility. Somebody said visibility. The realms of tangibility. The realms of touchability. And feelability. Are you getting it? That's what I want to say. That is the realm of dominion. But see the process. Born of God. Touched by God. Now, ruling in God. This last slab, which is this, the third dimension, which is the bodily ministry, the physical dimension, men will see, must 
come from a soul that is pure. This is why if God takes you to this dominion dimension and your soul has not been purged, what you will bring out will be corrupted. That is what's called Babylon, mystery. Babylon is not the building out there, it's not the structure out. Babylon is when a system comes out or a, 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 a lifestyle or a system or a philosophy, a way of behaving comes out of a corrupted soul. So a believer can be can have a dimension of Babylon. If a believer's soul has not been purged, and the things you are bringing out, the values, the canons, the system you want to build on earth, the, the business you want to build on earth, the ministries you want to build on earth, the marriage, the home, the family, the way of raising your children, the way to love your wife and your love your husband or submit to your husband. If it is not coming from a pure soul, the system or the structure you will build on the physical world will be what? Corrupted. So this is why God takes time to punch so that we will bring out of a pure conscience. That's why if God takes you to a business, if God, if God makes you a manager of that company, the CEO of that company, and this, the general manager of that company, and you are you're not punch your soul, you will corrupt your leadership. Your system will be corrupted. Even though you are the head of the, of the corporation, even though you are the pastor of the church, even though you are the CEO of that business, if the soul has not been punched, your values, your philosophy, will be corrupted because the motive is not clear. Some people have missed it. You see, the end of the commandment or the purpose that the end of the system, the end product of this thing we are talking about, of your salvation, is to have a pure heart, out of a pure conscience, and faith that is unfailing. You are born again, I have no problem with that. But how much of your born againism have touched your soul? How much of the spirit in you, that is in you has converted your soul? How, how many of how much of your co the soul compartment have been converted, touched, placed? Because that is the powerhouse. You say, guide your heart for out of it will flow the issues, the systems, the issues, the structures you are going to build. You are the, you are the product of build. You are the product of leadership. You are the product of, of, of dominion. You are going to build systems and structure. There is something that you are assigned to build on the earth. There is something that you are assigned to pioneer on the earth. There is something that heaven ordained that you will do on the earth. Am I complicated? But child of God, for the spirit of God, who is the custodian of all the dimensions of God, for him to assess the visibility, the physical dimension of you, it must go through the corridor of your soul. It doesn't jump your soul. God is a God of protocol. In this way, he does not break it. This is what corrupts ministries. This is what corrupts businesses. This is what corrupts marriages. You see a man trying to oppress a woman, depress the woman. You see a woman trying to win damages. This is because the soul has not been purged. The simple way to understand a soul of importance is a soul whose motives are purely godly. The motives are pure. But have you noticed that most of people do things for a reason? And most of the reason is self centeredness, selfishness. Even in homes, even in marriages. Self. This is how I, 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 I want to do it. This is how we do it. Where I come from. Men do it this way. I, traditions of men. And the woman said, ah, this man wants to subdue me. Me, I will tell and say, you can't subdue me. And the war begins. Soul is filthy. So he said, the spirit does that work. That when the spirit has gotten the soul to even to 50% or 60%, that there's something that he brings forth. It's called, he will give what is called wisdom. Back to Isaiah 11 verse 2. So the spirit of the Lord rests on you. That purges you, purifies a believer's soul. The first thing he will provoke in your visible dimension, in the physical dimension of the life of a believer, is wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. wisdom. Now, you see, wisdom is a creative force of God. What did I say? Yes. You know, you can't create without wisdom. God, before when God said, let there be light, you will see how it was initiated. In Genesis, he said, let there be light, and there was light. You're going to see something. Now, go to Proverbs chapter 8, from verse 1. Let's move. Because come with your prayer, and 
and understanding the top of the boy. He takes our stand on the top of the high gate beside the way to get to the back. See, he says he takes, she stands in the way, in the top of the high places. That is, it, this is, wisdom is exclusive for men that want to rule. If you want to be nobody, if you want to be an entity, if you don't want to become a man of affluence or authority on the earth, you don't need wisdom. Foolishness will do it very well for you. So he it's, it's, it's not, it's not a kindergarten class. Hello? It is exclusive for men who want to step into the purpose of their assignment in the earth or on the earth. Wisdom is very important. Okay, let me read. Just follow me. She started in the top of the high places, by the way, in the places of the past. She cried at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the door. Say, for you to assess your throne, for you to step into your dominion. The first person that must equip you for a dominion or rulership is wisdom. That was one thing Adam missed in the garden. After all that God did for Adam, when it was time for Adam, Adam has named the gardens, wisdom has taught him to name the garden. All the achievement that Adam had, it was wisdom that taught him. I will show you. But when it was time for him to step to his full assignment, which is to rule the earth, not just the garden. Adam could not choose by wisdom. Choose by foolishness. Hello? Don't choose by foolishness. Sir, Daddy, what do you mean by being chosen by foolishness? When you don't allow God to show you what to do. When you allow, when you have your senses, your five senses, when it's what you, I want, wisdom will be found. Any step you want to take by I want to. But when God begins to navigate you, that is each time you say God, you're saying wisdom is speaking to me. God's verse to the believer is wisdom. 